So many of you will have seen the first Five Composers One Theme project, where myself and four other music YouTubers worked with my very talented friends in the group Cromer to produce five one minute pieces. Well, I think everyone really enjoyed the experience and I was just thinking about ways I might make it happen again. When one day, I think it was in August, I got an email from the Orchestra of the Swan, who are a professional orchestra based in Shakespeare's hometown of Stratford-upon-Avon. Well, actually it was from Paolo, their head of marketing, and he said he really enjoyed watching my channel and was there some way we could collaborate? And straight away I thought, wow, imagine five composers project but for orchestra. But I didn't for the life of me think that he'd actually go for it. You know, an orchestra is a large beast and getting all of those people in one place, hiring the room, all the admin involved, basically every minute with an orchestra costs a large amount of money. So anyway, I arranged a phone call with Paolo. I said, I mean, what would be amazing with you guys would be the equivalent of the five composers project. Yeah, that's exactly what I was thinking, said Paolo. So we talked about dates, and the one that stood out was less than two months away in October, because the orchestra was doing a small tour of three dates of a programme that included Gershwin's famous Rhapsody in Blue. So for that programme they'd have a good size orchestra in place, which, by the way, would include the three saxophones needed in the Gershwin. That's particularly worth mentioning, I think, because I think it's my second most popular video, is why are there no saxophones in the orchestra? So typically a standard orchestral lineup doesn't include saxophone, so I knew this would be an extra treat for us all to be able to include saxes in our writing. So the orchestra had a three hour rehearsal schedule before each of those three concerts, and Paolo's cunning plan was that by the time of the third concert, the orchestra would have their music firmly under their belts, and so maybe they could sacrifice the second half of their final rehearsal to, well, let a bunch of YouTubers loose. So <clears throat> we've arrived in the theatre today and we're just setting up now, setting up all our, our equipment. The orchestra should arrive in the next half an hour or so, which is really exciting. And uh, we're all a little nervous as well, because it's a lot to get right. So it goes without saying that this was incredibly generous of the whole orchestra and management, including leader and artistic director David LePage and the wonderful conductor Rebecca Miller. They all basically gave up what could have been a nice peaceful final rehearsal before their last concert to instead cram in the recording of five new and pretty challenging pieces. And please bear in mind when you listen that we had somewhere between 10 and 12 minutes per piece. And I mean that from start to finish, so not 10 minutes to record, but 10 minutes in total to play it for the first time, practice bits, and then record it. So I think, as you'll see, what we achieved in that frankly ridiculous amount of time takes your breath away. So before we go any further, please say hello to the amazing Orchestra of the Swan. <laughs> and please also, will someone give the Marketer of the Year award to Paolo Pezzangora for making this happen? Okay, so next we had to decide who to invite. Now everyone last time did such a good job and seemed so thrilled with the chance to write for a classical group that I felt I just had to ask them all again for this one. So welcome back to Ben Levin, Adam Neely and of course Tantacruel. Now the only change this time was the wonderful Nare Sol, whose star has been rising maybe just a bit too quickly of late, so she didn't feel she had time to commit to this project. But we wish you well Nare and hopefully we'll collaborate again soon. So we needed a new Avenger, as it were, to take her place in the team. I asked around and Sarah Jeffrey, who runs a wonderful recorder playing channel, suggested a friend of hers, Beck Plexus. Now I didn't know Beck's work before, but just from what I heard online, I felt like she might be a good match for the project. In particular, she seems to have been involved with all kinds of music, from singing in her own bands to quite experimental music for classical ensembles. So please give a warm welcome to Beck Plexus. So the Avengers were now assembled, as it were. And stay tuned for the end of the video if you want to watch this very silly montage of us trying out poses for the YouTube thumbnail. And then finally there was the question of which theme or themes to use. Last time I pieced together five of the most famous themes in classical music. So as we were taking things to the next level this time in terms of writing for an orchestra, I thought maybe we should do the same with the themes and use our own unique themes. So how about themes based on the musical letters of our names? For those of you who don't know, this is an old trick in classical music that dates back to Bach's time and beyond. So if you look at the word tantacruel, for example, you can see that there's an A, another A, and a C. So I tried to make a quick musical motif out of that, 
and tried to make it sound like the person's name so it would stick in all of our minds when we're listening. So I think this one came out as the catchiest. Tanta cruel. Tanta cruel. Now, probably because of Bach, the traditional thing to do in classical music is use the German system of note naming for these things. So the letter B in German is actually used to signify what we would think of as a B flat. A B natural in German is actually written as an H, which none of us actually have in our names. And finally, E flat in German is pronounced S. So that's often used as the letter S. So it might be a bit confusing, I accept, but you can see, for example, that Bach's name, B-A-C-H, becomes B flat A. C, B natural. And the other really famous use of this technique is the Russian composer Dmitry Shostakovich, who found D, E flat, C, B in his name, and made it into a kind of meme that you can hunt for and find throughout his music. <laughs> So our musical personal memes are as follows. Tantacruel we've already seen. Tantacruel. And then we have Ben Levin. B flat E E. So Ben, ben Levin. Levin. Adam Neely produces A D A and two E's. So And I couldn't resist putting his in 5-8 just as a little nod to Adam's love of unusual time signatures. Beck Plexus produced quite a quirky B E C E S, which is B flat E. C, E, E flat. And finally, my own name has D, A, D, B, C, E. So all these five running together constitute our one theme. And I suggested to everyone that if they wanted to concentrate on their own particular theme, that was fine. But it would also be cool to include some of the others. So the date was set and the composers all started working away. And I suddenly had the realisation that the video was one thing, but getting a decent sound for a whole orchestra was an entirely different ball game to recording the five players that we had last time. So I was panicking a bit about this, and then I suddenly thought about Steve Long at Signum Records, who, as many of you will have seen, just released my new album, The North Wind Was a Woman. Now, as well as running the record label, Steve also records most of the UK's leading orchestras, so I thought if anyone could be able to offer me some advice, Steve would. So I emailed him and he said, well, why don't you use our work placement student, Tom? So Steve basically let Tom out with a van full of his best orchestral recording equipment. And Tom That's set the whole thing up with a couple of huge computers. And there we were basically set to go for a professional quality orchestral recording. So that was all a bit of a jackpot. I can't believe how lucky we got with all of that. And a huge thank you both to Tom, who was absolutely amazing on the day, as well as, of course, to Steve and everyone at Signum Records. Okay. Um, so we are in Hereford. This is David driving the car. This is my brother, Connor, is going to be helping us out with filming. And uh, we've spent a bit of time going through our notes and trying to figure out what would be good shots to take of each person's piece. And I've got this little Word document here. You can see I've spent quite a lot of time, hours and hours, putting this together. And yeah, we think these hey, are going to be... Yes? What am I doing? I thought I told you to make this entertaining. You're not going to put that in the video. <laughs> <laughs> That's not going in. <laughs> okay, how do I make this entertaining? <laughs> what, what do you want? Okay. Son of a... So it was an exhausting but really great experience, and let's see how we got on. First up was Tantacruel. Tantacruel. Hello, uh, Tantacruel here, and how are you all doing? We're back for another one of these. Uh, thanks very much, David, for inviting me. And this piece had quite a few external motivating factors. Uh, one would be it's for orchestra, but heavily weighted towards the brass and less so the strings. So I felt we should get a few bwomps in there. Uh, second influencing factor was 15 minute rehearsal time. With 15 minutes, I definitely didn't want to tax the musicians too much because everything really had to come together and you only really get about four shots. So I definitely stuck to a more traditional classical setup. Uh, and definitely then the biggest influencing factor was the theme that David gave me, which was tan to cruel. And I kind of thought, okay, well, that sounds very much like, well, a fanfare. Bum, ba, bum, 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 bum. So I leaned into that punch, I'd say, and I ended up writing something that I guess sounds a bit like what my theme would be if I was in a superhero movie. So the piece is called Tanta Theme. 
Get on in there. This is the raw reaction. Raw reaction. Raw. 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 Okay. I'm nervous again. There's a lot of anticipation going on right now. Never had my piece played by an orchestra before. And I'm about to hear not only my work played by an orchestra, but the work of many people I respect and wish the best for, so hopefully none of them are gonna get left in the dust and crushed. All right, so uh, here's uh, Tantacruel. Uh, Tantacruel, let's listen to your piece. Oh, sweet. Yeah, love the way the piano and the clarinet interact here. To crew. That's like the bad guy. The bad guy arrived. Santa Cruz, Santa Cruz. More like a science fiction movie. Horns, man. Sounding great. Very insistent. Nice, nice the dynamic changes. It's kind of one simple idea, so it works really well in a short piece like this. We all know when it's going to end. Wow, I love that one. Tantacruel. <laughs> Such a sensual theme, Tantacruel. Ugh. I really like also the triads and just the harmonic approach. That was awesome. Tantacruel had a really short motive but he really managed to bring it to all sorts of places. Maybe because it was so short and kind of a simple motive, but then because of that, he could combine it with all these chords and different meters and uh, yeah, cool. I've always hoped I'd get the chance to write for a professional orchestra and here we go. This is my first time doing it. And the thing that is the most exciting and appealing about an orchestra to me is its scale. Just the fact that you can go from the tiniest, quietest acoustic sound to the biggest, hugest acoustic sound, and there's just a ton of humans with a lifetime of experience playing their instruments at the helm, pushing the dynamics forward, pushing the emotion forward. So in my piece, I wanted to take full advantage of this dynamic range and the scale of the orchestra by starting out with a long meditative period focusing in on the tiniest details of the piano player and their fingers on the instrument and all that and then see the orchestra sort of bloom out of that isolated piano. So I'm hoping that you get the full effect, you get to feel the full power of the dynamic range of the orchestra by starting so little and getting so big.
Here we go. Bends. I'll preface this by saying at the last time <laughs> that we did this, I thought like, oh, I know how Ben is going to write. And then he wrote something completely different. So I have no idea what Ben's going to write for this challenge. Surprise me, Ben. <laughs> okay, now it's my turn. When am I going to learn to just let go and not care so much? Here we go. Let's see what happens. Spooky. Piano. Solo piano opening surprised all of us, I think. Surprising to start with only piano in an orchestra piece. There's that smooth, filthy sax. Saxophone player absolutely nailed it. Love it. Bleeding gums, Murphy. So full of soul, this sax line. Another great Ben Levin melody. Strings creeping in. Yeah. <laughs> How Gershwin. Also like the way the bass is going down as the strings are going up. Oh, that was it. Oh, it was so short. I wanted more. Yeah, it was really smooth and slightly sexy. Just this, I don't know how to call it. Yeah, it was just Ben. You pulled it off, man. I like the way uh, the structure of this is just a diagonal line going that way. So uh, one thing I did quite enjoy here is the performance direction given to the string players, which was oh so dirty for when they come in. And they were looking at it, not quite knowing exactly how to perform it and having a bit of a d animated discussion about it. And then the sax player tried it out and they listened and they kind of went, oh, I thought that was quite funny. Play it dirty for me, Mr. Sax Man. Play it dirty. It's kind of ballsy to start like a piece for orchestra that you only have a minute to write for with just piano and <laughs> piano and tenor saxophone. It's almost like that's the most musical option. That's not what I did at all. The most musical option would be to write something like that rather than try and throw everything at it like I did. I love the room reverb, uh, the room sound on that one lonely saxophone. I was, I was thinking it'd be like an outer space kind of cowboy bebop, like lonely jazz in space thing. The, the jazzy space vibe I was going for actually translated really nice, but the, the, the loneliness, I think, comes through really well. When you, when you have an orchestra to work with, zooming in on just one or two players for a while is really good for evoking loneliness. Hello, I'm Beck Plexus. Thank you, David, for having me in this video. So David came up with five themes, one theme per composer, and we were free to use whatever combination of those themes that we deemed interesting. <laughs> wow, English, amazing. I ended up using my own theme and Adam's theme because my girlfriend and I have been watching all of Adam's YouTube videos and it's really cool. The other people are also cool, but Adam. So I picked those two themes and I started looping them. And then I started combining them with all sorts of different chords. And the cool thing is then that the harmonic context changes all the time. And because of that, the themes sound brand new every time. I most of the time write for very unusual instrumentations. So to write for something as conventional as an orchestra was pretty surprising to me. Nevertheless, I tried with every instrument group to get something special out of it. And then there was this tiny, weird little piece, cutting in line. Why cutting in line? Well, I showed it to my girlfriend and then she said that it made her think of people cutting in line at supermarkets and that she really hates that. And then I thought, ah, oh, awesome. I'll just call it cutting in line. And then after that, I thought, wait, so it makes you think of something you hate.
Okay, let's listen to Beck. Oops, a daisy. All right, I don't really know Beck, but uh, I'm excited to hear her stuff. Uh, okay, here we go. Let's listen to mine. Plexus motive. In a way that it really feels that the uh, timpani bassoon combo is the uh, the star of the show here. Wow. Nice bit of bassoon. Flutter tongue. Appreciate a good flutter tongue. I like those little gaps, the way it suddenly makes you aware of the whole orchestra. This really has a uh, Stravinsky vibe, I think. It's a nice gentle groove. <laughs> nice, nice. I like ending on that crunchy, crunchy sort of situation. There's something French like Eric Satie or something in this music, I think. That had a cool groove to it. That was a great example of a bunch of different sounds coming in in such a way where they weren't interrupting each other at all to create a sense that even though there were many sounds, there was one idea. Reminds me of a starfish with a ruby in the middle, like that one Pokemon with starfish. So you've got all the little, the five hands, and they're all like I am surprised that they worked their way through that. After I finished the score and I sent it to David, I thought, oh, I made it way too full. But um, yeah, it kind of works, I guess. Cool, I want to write more. So I really wanted to write as concise a musical idea as I possibly could within one minute, but I also kind of wanted to experiment with as many different kinds of textures as I could because I don't really get the opportunity to write for orchestra that often, and I didn't really want to waste my opportunity here. So with that in mind, I knew that I really wanted the climax of this to have like a metal texture. So I had like the timpani playing, like the bass line. I had like a suspended cymbal going in half notes across the bar line in a measure of seven, eight, creating this kind of like polymetric thing, like very mushuga sort of texture. There's kind of like a drop that happens into the metal section, which is kind of based on this gliss in the woodwinds in very, very tight intervals. Anyway, most of my thinking in the beginning of shaping this was textural, like how does each section feel? And then after I really kind of came up with an idea for that and a scheme for that, I started thinking more melodically. But yeah, that was, uh, that's what I was thinking. Hope you enjoy it. Adam Neely. Oh God. Oh God, I'm nervous. I'm nervous. <laughs> Very dissonant opening. I also like the way he shares the uh, melody between the bassoon and the the trumpets. A very low bassoon and very high trumpets. And then the Adam chords come through. Yeah, 
All right, that gliss, that gliss, I really like. Woo! This is where it all really kicks off. Cool. Yeah, a lot of ideas. I had to stay really concentrated to keep track of where we were going. I need another listen. Taking things up a notch with the orchestra. That is so intense. I really like that. That's stuck in my head. You can always count on Adam to make something badass. I like the quite clear structure that this piece has. You've got the, the opening rhythm, then you've got that lush string moment, and then the kind of gent metal section at the end. So I know that people have this tendency to say whenever you play them some modern music, oh, that sounds like something from a movie soundtrack, but this really sounded like something from a movie soundtrack to me. And I, I do wonder whether uh, Adam was influenced by uh, maybe Hitchcock or something. Um, but this really, I could, I could just see titles for North by Northwest or something. It really felt like uh, Saul Bass would be uh, animating the uh, the intro. Seems like we all have to finish with this sort of unexpected burst or a sudden cutoff. I guess it's such a short time frame that the end has to be a bit of a surprise. Whew, all right, that was me. That's terrifying listening to my own shit. <laughs> and the orchestra sounds really good, especially considering that it was like probably sight read and there was like three seconds of rehearsal. <laughs> So I think like most of us, I focused in on my own theme to start with, and I, you can hear it at the beginning on the saxophones, but it becomes a sort of background motive to this larger theme which the strings take over with. And I, I move away from that idea and back to it a couple of times, and then at the very end there's this sort of sudden change into sort of triple time with the Ben Levitt motive. So it's a sort of dancey, positive piece overall. The dad of the project. Okay, I've never heard of this guy. Let's see what he's like. David's. Oh, it's so bright. Nice triplety sax. Oh, nice. That transition is lovely. Really clever. Ah, oh, really nice. It's the same theme, but now differently orchestrated. I love the way that you're spelling out what would be the snare hit if it was on drums, like... It feels really cohesive, even though it's so many var variations. That's really nice. <laughs> cute. Is that what you refer to as one of your cute endings there, David? Oh, wow. This one felt really well balanced. Like all the instruments had its had their own good places in the whole uh, palais of the orchestra. Also, even though the rhythms were quite dense with such a big group, it can be quite challenging to then get those rhythms in place, especially if, if you have a short amount of time to prepare. But yeah, I think the way David wrote it was really effective. So I like the way everyone 
you, we all have a sense clearly of the sort of grammar of music and how you introduce stuff and how you finish stuff off. And it's very interesting to see how some of us jettison some of those things uh, within the space of a minute uh, in order to get other types of things to, to work. Uh, some people had intros, other people just got straight into it. And I thought that was fascinating. David's had a very distinct outro as well. Um, Adam Adam had a small intro and a small outro. I guess it's just interesting to see how everyone solved their own little orchestral Sudoku puzzle uh, to fit it in within a minute. <laughs> it's insanely inspiring to hear all this stuff because it's like, damn, do I have a lot of work to do. <laughs> so it's been interesting to see how we all try to cope with the challenge of writing for orchestra. I think all of the pieces aren't as instantly accessible as last time. They, when we were all doing our reaction videos, we all took at least a couple of takes to go back and re-listen because there's a lot to take in in one hearing. But I think it's been really interesting to see everyone attempting to cope with this iconic institution of the orchestra. I just wonder how we can up the ante next time we're all going to start writing operas. So if you've supported my channel on Patreon, thank you so much for helping make content like this possible. A huge thank you also to Martin and Connor for their contributions, and to Tom and everyone at Signum Records. Thanks again to Ben, Adam, Martin and Beck. But mostly, of course, thank you to the Orchestra of the Swan, Rebecca Miller and Paolo Petzangara for making this all possible and being such fun to work with. I hope we can do it again sometime. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. This is my audition reel for Avengers Part 5. Composers. <laughs>